Welcome back friends. We are talking about the reproductive processes. In this video, we will be talking about the gamete production process, which is also termed as gametogenesis. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video about uh, the as a sexual reproduction and the stages of sexual reproduction, I will recommend you to go to my channel and find this video uh, about sexual reproduction and watch it first. Then come back here and watch this video because it will make a lot sense then. So let's begin with this first stage of sexual reproduction, which is a part of pre-fertilization process, which is termed as gamete production or gametogenesis. You know, gametogenesis is the very first stage of a sexual reproduction and that is very unique quality for the sexual reproduction because it will produce gametes of identical, I mean gametes of different type, not identical, right? We have discussed previously that there are certain organisms who have certain similar looking gametes, right? For example, cladophora, which is an algae, we have similar structure or shape looking gametes. They are called as homogametes. But generally in organisms or higher order eukaryotic organisms like human or birds or reptiles, most of them, they have different type of gametes. So say the female gametes usually are larger one and they are round or oval shaped. On the other hand, the male gametes are smaller one with ha most of the time has a long tail or flagella to prop propagate and move from one place to another place. So, so the structure and shape of this male and female gametes are kind of differentiated between all those other individuals like birds, reptiles or and, uh, mammals and all of them, right? And this type of gametes are termed as heterogametes because they are different, differentiated and different in nature, right? But both of them have a very common thing that is a nucleus inside and the nucleus is containing n number of chromosomes. So n number of chromosome is present both in male gamete as well as in female gamete, right? Because once those gamete will fuse, the new cell, the fused cell that is called as zygote will get 2n number of chromosomes because that's what we want to have inside our body because all of us definitely carry 2n number of chromosomes in all somatic cells of our body, right? So if we get only one half of this nucleus, we will not develop 2n number of chromosomes and thus we will not survive, right? So that's very, very important for the gametes to fuse with each other to get 2n number of chromosomes. And, the, in, and so, so, so this is a kind of very interesting there. So once we know that about this gamete production. Now how they are actually produced? Because you know inside our body we have somatic cells that's we are talking about somatic cells and somatic cells are having 2n number of chromosomes, right? So if I draw a somatic cell it is having 2n number of chromosomes inside. Now, now the somatic cells undergo this they undergo what is called process called meiosis. Sorry. Meiosis. Meiosis is a process, a special type of cell division. This is also a cell division, but this is a special type of cell division which will make the number of chromosomes half, right? So that's very, very important, right? So here if you look at here, we are having 2n number of chromosomes inside nucleus. After the meiosis, what it will produce? It will produce cells, smaller cells obviously, it will produce smaller cells with n number of chromosomes inside, right? So what happens usually, the, the cell which is having 2n number of chromosomes, it, it replicates the chromosome, I mean, I mean it duplicates the number of chromosomes, so it becomes 4n in that process, right? And then it will go through the meiosis division. Once it goes through the meiosis cell division, then the 4n number of chromosomes are getting dispersed into four different into four different cells and all of those four different cells contain one n number of chromosomes each. So ultimately you know 4n was here after this process we get n into 4 because four cells are produced 4n. So the total number of chromosome is maintained which is very much mathematical in this case but we get smaller cells with n number of chromosomes. Now this is how we produce gametes because these cells will be termed as gametes. It can be male gamete or it can be a female gamete, 
whatever but they will produce gametes now generally the gamete production process for male gametes are termed as spermatogenesis spermatogenesis because you know it is genesis means the production and sperm so production of sperm is spermatogenesis this is for male gametes and for the female gametes it is oogenesis so it is oogenesis oogenesis means you know ovum o is related to ovum somehow so oogenesis means genesis means production so production of ovum so it is for the female gamete production right so these terminologies are very very important so lock them in your mind uh, get a notebook or write it down somewhere but these are very very important you should know right so in both this process spermatogenesis and oogenesis they are occurred in a specific locations or dedicated organs of a human body for human for other animals also specific dedicated organs of their body for example oogenesis actually occurred in the ovary similarly spermatogenesis occurs in the specific organ of animal that is testis right so these things are pretty much common to all of the individuals that we usually know pretty much common to all of us right we have specific type of uh, cells specific type of organs they produce right and so that all these gametes should be produced properly right for example in cockroaches they have testes it is produced in testes uh, and uh, for for the cockroaches the egg is produced in ovary right and for the plant also that are that are having different types of features like you know uh, male part is there female part is there male part is stamen female part is carpel so they are present all the time right so this is how the gametes are produced it is the basic overview of gamete production there are huge advances and how they produce and all these different stages i haven't mentioned here uh, if you want to see i uh, will put a link uh, in the description as well as at the end of the video so that you can watch the detailed version of this uh, this developmental biology classes which is dedicated for you know undergraduate and postgraduate students so so that's that's kind of uh, how it usually works and i hope that's helpful